Thank you, my friend. The stage is yours. Welcome to the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV. Uh, thanks to your donations for the donation incentive, we are now a Bon Boy. It was really close. Uh, it was almost a Lollafell. <laughs> it would have been fine, but we are now a Bon Boy. And then look at this, look at this community that is here. Check this out. Uh, usually when I'm through any of these floors in Palace of Dead, I, am, I see like two people by Lucky, and we have all these people. And just to know it took probably three to seven hours for these guys to get in here. So that's really, really amazing. Um, so thank you guys for showing up. Uh, we are doing Palace of the Dead floors 171 to 180 with no mouse and both hands on the keyboard. There is a mouse, but it's more like a moral support mouse. So it's just chilling there. Uh, I, I'm, I'm having it here so you guys can see if I'm actually using it or not for the once we start the run. So that's why it's there. Uh, I'll sort of go over this setup once we're inside, but in the meantime, I'd like to first introduce my couch and my good friend, Frosty. Hey, Hello. I'm Frosty. <laughs> uh, for those who might know me from the Final Fantasy community, I sort of run a weekly podcast called Mog Talk. I do a handful of community events. And really, I'm just excited to be here and kind of watch Angelus do something extremely difficult and make it look kind of easy. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Um, so let me give a bit of an intro to this run to set the stage of what you're going to watch and then we'll start up. Uh, some or many Final Fantasy XIV players may know or have heard of Palace of the Dead, which was inspired by a dungeon in another game called Tactics Ogre. But those players probably know, like like, like uh, Mr. Game and Child said, you probably only know like the lower floors, like 51 to 60, uh, with the match party grind or maybe the first 100 floors. This content has 200 floors split into 10 floor intervals, so that's why we're kind of in this area that we're chilling about to do the next 10. And you can only step into 101 Plus and, and above with either pre-made or by yourself like we are solo. Uh, what you'll see today is like a snapshot of the entire run. Uh, one could argue it's the hardest set of the whole challenge. Uh, by starting at 171 plus, we are already 7 to 13 hours into this file. So if we were to die today, if we were to duty fail at any point in this one, we will have to return back to floor 1. I don't think GDQ would really appreciate me spending the next 13 hours just getting this file back up, so we'll hopefully uh, get this clear out of the way today. Also, as mentioned, this is the critically acclaimed MMORPG, right, where you can play through the Heavensward expansion for free with no restrictions. This very, this very challenge you can do on a free trial. Um, which is so cool and if you never touch the game if you never sub you can do this like right now you can like install the game and try it out um with a little bit of work of course but you can try it out um and you can start your journey for the necromancer title which is the one i have on top of my head and you only get that soloing this place from one to 200 on any job but we're taking in machinist uh for today it's the rarest title out in there, relation I think, right? <laughs> it, it is one of the rarest titles out yeah. there uh, like less than 1% of the player base has it, even if you include the free trials. Mm -hmm. um, in relation to that, I will be playing this run kind of similar to free trial, uh, even though I am sub the game. So we are using potions that we will only get from House of the Dead, and we are not using food, which we I have like a, a little hard to tell, but I have a full complement of food and stuff I can do because, because we are sub, but we are going to avoid using that, so it kind of has that vibe of the free trial. All right, with that laid down, I'll get up to the, that is the exit, I'll get up to the entrance and uh, time will start when you see the duty commence text show up on the screen, the screen will fade in and out of black and then it'll duty commence and we'll start the timer. So let's get it started. All right, 171 to 180, let's go. A little small countdown, three, two, one, let's go. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pop A. Commander Raising. So I just said, once we get in here, ooh, a nice start. I love it. This is the way this run should start. Um, so, like I said, once we start the run, if I were to die, this run would be over. But we do have a power up that allows us to kind of have like a, effectively a reway. So it gives you a little bit of an insurance. And that isn't just a marathon safety kind of thing. It's literally like every single runner who does this would want to have the, uh, the re-raising up, especially on these four specifically. So right here, this is actually a really good example of why Machinist is pretty good. Uh, we do a lot of damage just kind of running around. We don't want to stay in place because this thing hits like a literal truck. Um, and I'm going to try to eliminate this thing in time, but it's a nice, really opening start to this one. So I have to open these chests for the power-ups 
that are involved. Um, if you look at the right side of the screen, I have two UIs here. I have one that says for 171 and I have one that has my character info. So what that is, is a uh, special exclusive to this content. The one with the four 171 is my map. It is randomly generated. You can kind of think of this like a roguelike. So a lot of things are random, kind of where the enemies are spawning, what kind of map we have is random. And then on the other side, the character info has uh, what job I'm playing, as well as a list of items, which are my power-ups. So my power-ups kind of give a variety of different things to, to help me out on the run. They are limited, so you'll see a lot of threes in there, and that is the cap of the Hellmanders, they're called. Uh, and I don't want to just use them willy-nilly, because they're not going to be, uh, they're not going to come very often, and some of them are very, very rare. Now, the chest I just opened up, which ended up becoming a Mimic, uh, that's a chance that happens when you open these chests that are supposed to give you a power-up. So, as much as it's obviously nice to open these chests to, to kind of get yourself stronger, you are running the risk of trying to ha handle one of the more difficult enemies uh, in in this set of fours, which is the Mimic. And honestly, it's, it's a big waste of time a lot of times. You don't want to see them, but you can't not open these chests for that. Uh, now, funny enough, I haven't even gotten out of this room because enemies just seem to want to keep saying hello to me. Uh, that's nice of them, because it does kind of make it a little bit easy for me to keep this run uh, moving, but that's okay. So, uh, let's do a quick explanation of the Aetherpool army that you see on the character info. You'll see my machinist job name, and below that, it's arm and armor. It says Aetherpool arm and armor. Uh, that is kind of the power level system in this game mode. So, I do have cap 9999, which is kind of what you'd like to have on these higher floors. Uh, but you don't even need to have gear from the outside, which really makes this... So we are going to get that sorted out, and we're going to bring the run back. We are warriors of light, friends. We will not give up so easily. I'm going to go ahead and work on some donations while we're doing that. The professor sent in $25. Must have step mania, but also Bard is the greatest FF14 job. Professor, I'm going to let you get away with that because you're donating to PCF. So I'm going to let you get away with it. Also, holy cow, we are about to cross $89,000 out of the $100,000 that we need to get Step Mania added to the marathon. This is incredible. Absolutely keep those donations coming, please. No bugs, only features sent in $250. Vulnerability stacks are only a suggestion. Good luck on the Palace of the Dead run. You see, no bugs, you say that, and I say that, and my healer is very sad. Um, so, I really, it's, it, it's two against one on that front. Um, so I feel like we're winning. Wolf Prince sent in $50.
I've met great friends through FF14, and I'm so excited for this Palace of the Dead run to be on GDQ. I've only ever gotten to about floor six, so I've got a lot to learn. In the meantime, back to practicing my murder rescue technique. <laughs> oh, uh, healers do know how to get their revenge, don't they? And Sir Bill sent in another $50. Let's see the Manderville Mambo on floor 180. I'm here for... Oh, we're over 90K. We're over 90K towards Step Mania. All right, Warriors of Light, you know what that means. 90K, we're scared of that number. Uh, let's get past it and get it to 100K very, very quickly, please. While we're working on that, looks like we are getting back to the action. So let's go back over to Angelus for the run. Alrighty, welcome back guys, sorry about that. Hopefully everything will be smooth now on our end. Uh, let me continue the run. So we just cleared up 171. We will now do some fun stuff in the run. Uh, everything went smooth on the previous, it didn't miss too much. I was just getting uh, getting through some enemies here. So what we're going to try to do is something, what I'm going to try to find is a specific trap. So along these lines, uh, along these floors, there are random traps. You'll see like a red symbol over there. Uh, and the, this is one of the reasons why we kind of hug the walls, etc., to kind of avoid said traps. And likelihood of the traps being along the walls are unlikely, but there are some that are going to be there. So we'll do some fun uh, tech, which we like to call the landmine tech here. So I'm going to pull a couple enemies here. I'm going to be using a power-up called the Pomander of Witching, which will transform some of these enemies into kind of a weaker state. Some of them are not that much weaker, but, you know, for the for the sake of just keeping it simplistic. So we use a Pomander of Witching right here. Now, this is a landmine. It looks like a symbol like this. So when I step over this landmine, uh, let me just set this up a little bit. And I'm going to step over it. Hopefully I don't die doing it. Yes, very good. Okay, so that also affects the enemies here. Um, so it allows me to kind of kick, get a little bit of quick kills on these guys to get fast kills and to kind of proceed the full a little bit faster than just doing this normally. Now, this is kind of unnecessary for like a for like a DPS as we are doing machinists here, but that's okay. Um, I just wanted to kind of demonstrate something really cool about that. Now, excuse me while I adjust my thing. There we go. Um, and that's something that you'll see a lot of tanks and uh, healers do on their runs when they do it, because tanks and healers will have a lot less DPS than an actual DPS like Machinist. So ways to make up for that is to do uh, techniques like that in the run. And um, it, it's really useful, pretty dangerous, but it's, it's pretty useful there. Um, all right, so. Keys open. I'm just going to check some of these rooms to see what the chest is because we did get out of here really fast. So I have some time to uh, see what kind of power ups we get on the run. Let's see. And you're fully stacked up on power ups for this run, I, aren't you? I am. But what's interesting about this set, uh, and we kind of we kind of advertise this as the hardest set, is as much as I am full stocked up, we want to kind of stay stocked up because if we kind of just don't check these chests, it might be really tough to get through without getting a little help from these power ups. Hmm. Yeah, right. you know, one thing that some uh, players might not know, there's like about 20 or so jobs <laughs> in Final Fantasy XIV. Yep. And we're playing the one with the gun that can run around called Machinist. That's right. Uh, that, that's completely uh, probably one of the best jobs to play this content on, or uh, what would you say? Would Red Mage, maybe? <laughs> well, you know, Red Mage used to be the way to go, but... Uh, kind of the job in itself is still fine to use, but some other jobs have kind of just shown that they are a little bit more useful, especially with the knowledge that we've kind of gathered with this content. Um, Red Mage has been tough, but like tanks also are pretty good to use in here. Um, but one of the things that as you as I'm kind of demonstrating uh, how this how Machinist plays out, um, you can see kind of all the the tricks and stuff we can do and the kiting and everything to kind of save us from from taking a lot of damage. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Game Shadow, if you have some donations, we can do that now, and then I'll just try to clean oh, up this floor. Oh, absolutely. Getting a lot of love for you here in these donations. Uh, Supreme sent in $50. Happy to see Final Fantasy XIV at GDQ. Been hooked on this game for the last two years now, and might be playing it while watching this. Best of luck to Angelus Demonis, who is going to crush this run. Thank you. Another $50 here from Steffi SR. 
glad we got to see the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV, which has a free trial up to level 60 with no time limit, including the award-winning expansion Heavensward in GDQ. Good luck with the run, Angelus. Wish we had gotten La Angelus. Greetings from the Spanish <laughs> Restream. Nice. Oh, well, too bad. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Uh, and fifty dollars from Raffle Skippy. Can we get a shout out for our other crafter mains out there? Uh, yo, shout outs to crafter mains. We would we would be uh, much less well dressed without you. True. Mm -hmm. And so I guess like the uh, what what were you hoping? What were you hoping to actually win? And jealous for the uh, race choice? Uh, I mean, I would have liked Miko because that's yeah. that's what I've been. I've actually been a Miko. Uh, ever since my days on uh, Final Fantasy XI. And actually, the way I'm playing with the keyboard and no mouse is because of my Final Fantasy XI days, mm -hmm. um, where that game did really have the greatest mouse support. Uh, and I played the game for like seven plus years. And then I've only played eleven FF11 and FF14 as an MMO. So when I transitioned from 11 to 14, I was just like, okay, well, can I play like I did with FF11? And short story is yes, but it took some work to get to this point that we are at now, where we literally just don't have any need for the mouse, especially in this content, uh, per se. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me try to get to this. All right. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I had another thought in my mind. I just forgot, like what I like. Well, what I was gonna say, but that's just one like, thing that kind of broke off into another. Topic. Yeah, yeah, no. One thing that people might be noticing though is how you're kind of running past some of the mobs. <laughs> how you're kind of like, I guess uh, it looks like they should be attacking you, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Well, some of them, uh, they are, they are, they have like different aggro uh, rules to them. Some enemies will aggro via if they see you. Some enemies, enemies will aggro what we call proximity, where you just if you're nearby them, they will aggro you. So a lot of times you'll see me kind of run behind certain enemies. It's because I know that they are sight and they're not going to give me a problem. Um, whereas other ones I kind of stay away from, and because I know that they probably no matter what I do, unless they're just out of the way, they're going to they're going to give me an issue. So just for an example, like these two enemies in front of me, this this Domel over here is a proximity. So if I get near to him, he is just going to plain out aggro. Uh, whereas the the banter snatch is over here that's the tiger i just have to make sure i'm not in his line of sight and there i just got kind of close to that and uh boom he aggroed but uh but that's where kind of some of the game knowledge doesn't come to play about knowing what you can kind of get around what you can't get around and sometimes it also leads into being able to uh decide your pulse because what you're just looking at with the map which which i which i'll try to explain now i was trying to do that on the first floor um you'll see like a key, and right now it's an orange key. And it kind of gives us an indication on um, how how many, or how the floor is progressing in terms of opening it. When it's, when it's a gold, when it's a white key, I'm sorry, uh, that means the floor is open. But it's kind of like, it's just kind of giving you a general idea. And once that key opens up, that's, like I said, the exit is open, but you kind of don't want to keep going and killing enemies because it will cost you time, like no matter how you look at it. Uh, unless there are really specific reasons, but there are kind of specific reasons to do so. But if you're just trying to go for the clear, you don't want to kill past the, the key opening. So you kind of have to optimize your picks, optimize your pulls, such that uh, you do not kind of waste time with extra pulls and everything. Mm. You know, um, uh, the other thing, I, I was just going to ask about Machinists in general, because we actually had a patch mm -hmm. recently, uh, uh, yes. which is kind of a precursor patch to new content for Deep Dungeon. Uh, we don't have to go into that too much, but I wanted to talk about, mm -hmm. at least right now, but uh, Machinists got buffed a little bit, didn't they? It did. Um, I mean, from my understanding, I think with the raids, they seem really happy with the buffs on, on uh, Machinists. For for us, it's really interesting because uh, Machinists, I think, in raids have had a little bit of issues with people, um, you know, trying to get enough out of the job, trying to produce whatever just to make it useful for raids. But funny enough, they keep buffing it up for the raid, and in here, in Deep Dungeon, in, in Palace of the Dead, uh, it just kept getting better and better because it was already good in here. Um, and getting all those little buffs actually made it even stronger. So it does help the case of, you know, why this job is a really good job to take in, etc. But here we're going to do an example quick uh, against this enemy. This enemy will do some really nasty damage. But we do have some ways and tools on Machinists to kind of handle this. So one of the first ones we have is called Leg Graze. And you'll see a heavy debuff onto this enemy. So now that enemy is moving a lot slower. So this is helping me 
uh, get a little bit of distance from him and he can't hit me, which is fantastic. Now I'm going to hit a sprint as well to kind of follow it up to kind of maintain the distance. And this is kind of like the combination of things that Machinist has to kind of stay alive and to not take the damage. Even though it has a much weaker defense than, you know, some of the other jobs like tanks, etc. We are able to stay alive and uh, make it through. Now, on the previous floor, uh, we had used what's called a Pomander of Alteration. And what that does is that it changes enemies in a room, this room in particular, to either Mandragoras, which you see right now, or the Mimics, which you saw in the very beginning. Hopefully it wasn't too choppy for you guys to see that Mimic when we started up the, the, the run. But the Mandys are really good because they, they die in one shot, and they're super, super great. But the the... The Mimics are bad because they obviously take a little bit longer to kill. And also at the beginning of the floor, we picked up a Pomander of Flight. Oh, there's another Mimic. Speaking of, um, we picked up a... Uh, we used a Pomander of Flight, which will effectively reduce the the amount of kills I need to get off a of floor by half. So to get off a of floor, the average that you're looking for is between 4 and 8 kills. Uh, if you use a Pomander of Flight, now you're looking at probably 2 to 4 kills potentially. So that's really like a nice time save. It does reduce the enemies into a floor, so that's really nice to have. Now, we also now just picked up a, a Pomander of Rage, and it, it came up very quickly, but we'll be, we will be using it. On top of what we like to call in the community a um, a treasure room, or a room that's really nasty. I think the, the Japanese call it uh, the monster house. So what tends to happen sometimes is sometimes they just like to shove all themselves into one room like this, and it is pretty disgusting to try to get through. Thankfully, we have what we call a Pomander of Rage. Now, I'm just going to kind of set this up a little bit to, head, to help me. I used the Pomander safe to get rid of traps, so that doesn't become a problem. Now, as for Rage, we get to transform into a Manticore. And this special Manticore has the ability to one-shot any enemy that I hit as long as I'm in melee range. It really makes this a lot easier to manage, as opposed to, you know, the amount of time we were killing, which I think on average I was taking maybe about uh, one minute to two minutes to kill, to kill stuff. But fortunately, we actually picked one up and we were able to get through this room without a problem. Uh, if, I, if I didn't have it, I mean, maybe I still would have used it, uh, especially because I wanted to decide to stay in time, but thankfully we didn't have to make that decision. Angelus, uh, and now we're just going to... Real you know, quick, yes? Tech is asking for about 30 mm -hmm. seconds uh, to, okay, 30 to seconds. work on the stream. All right, so can I go in buggy? A little bit. Okay. All right. Okay. Give me a moment, I'll stop the stream and do it. All right, looks like we are coming back. So, sorry about that, Angelus. We're going to bring you back up. Let's keep running. All righty. Sorry about that, guys. I apologize, but hopefully uh, we'll be able to get at least the meaty part of the run going in. We've stepped into 175, and now uh, we're going to continue going through these enemies. Now, one of the reasons uh, that would be kind of a question, I think it was also part of the questions from earlier when we did the interview, is um, why do I do Deep Dungeon? You know, what is my interest with this content? Uh, one of the things that I really liked about this, you know, this is an MMO, you're supposed to do party stuff, but, well, we're not supposed to do party stuff, but this, this content in particular gave an option for a challenge that is solo, and uh, you can kind of enjoy this and still kind of feel like you've accomplished something. Now, this content is kind of meant for four people. Uh, you can go in here with four people, challenge it with four people, but when you go in solo like I am right now, uh, the enemies don't scale. They are basically exactly the same uh, difficulty, the same everything. And that's why this makes this challenge really, really interesting to me. And not to mention, there is also a leaderboard that does exist uh, when you do 
when you do this in the official website. So if you go to if you go to the Final Fantasy XIV website, which is called Lodestone, there is a leaderboard to all the people who have cleared and everything. And it's fantastic. So it kind of has a little bit of a competitive feel and the game kind of automatically updates these scores every day. So if you get a score, if you clear the run, so on and so forth, then you'll see it. Well, if it's high enough, you'll see it and you get to kind of, you know, compete with everyone else. And we do have a new deep dungeon coming in in 6.3 by the name of uh, 6.35, I'm sorry, in about two months by the name of Eureka Orthos. And the leaderboards there are going to be nice and fresh and everyone doing it will have their scores. And that's going to be a lot of fun and definitely really hyped about that new deep dungeon coming in. Um, all right, this ape here, this is one of the nastier enemies that exists. They are proximity aggro, which we talked about earlier, but they also like to eat bananas, and when they do, they get a buff, and they will constantly kind of hit me getting a physical bone stack, so I don't want to pull this while it is buffed, and I'm also buffed. Which I just kind of did, but it's okay, we'll be fine. Now I'm going to pull here. All right. And we're going to try to mitigate here and try to keep this guy at bay while we try to kill him. He was in the way, so I had to kind of... I had to kind of deal with him to to get through that room. So we're going to kite him out. This is, again, this is kind of the power that exists with Machinist. Uh, we get to do this kiting, even though this thing hits like a literal truck. He could probably two-shot me if he really wanted to. But hopefully we will keep away from him before anything bad happens and we're good to go. So we're going to go find the exit here as we proceed through this floor. Let's see where the exit is. I think and just making this look too there. easy. I, like, <laughs> I don't know how you do it, man. <laughs> well... A lot of practice, that's for sure. Yeah, years. <laughs> years yeah, close. years of practice, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. So let's get into this next floor. Um, so time management wise, actually, even though with some of the issues that we were having, we we're still really good on time, thankfully, and our palms are still really good in, in, in good order. So that's a good thing. Uh, I want to get to this floor 176 with at least about a little over 30 minutes, and especially because we're going to give a little extra time for the last boss, just in case anything goes wrong. Now, right now we have some debuffs. In in Deep Dungeon, starting at floor 172, uh, there is a chance that the floor can be debuffed. Um, and right now we have kind of two really kind of interestingly nasty debuffs, which is uh, auto heal disabled. The char our characters do have a natural uh, healing regen, uh, whether you're in combat and out of combat. But what this happens is that it removes that and uh, kind of makes it less light, less for me to heal back. And on top of that, I am blinded. Uh, so I have a chance, like I think it's about a 25% chance for me to start missing uh, my abilities, which is going to make this a little spicy in terms of trying to deal with this wolf. Because um, this guy is definitely nasty, because he does some damage that heals himself back and also puts a DOT on me, a damage over time. So we're just gonna try to make sure we get through to him. And boom. Now we do have a Pomander called the Pomander of Serenity that will remove this and I will show that to you now because that is actually going to help me. It will take off these buffs, which is really nice to, to do, in a, especially in a floor like this. Right, we got another wolf that aggroed. I'm going to watch myself over here. Alright, so we're good. Okay, I'm going to do some damage here. Now because a lot of times when I'm kiting, sometimes you don't kind of see the, man, the enemy in view. I'm going to try to help out to make sure that the enemy is in view here. Uh, so you see them, but you know, running away, etc. Uh, a lot of times you are kind of just keeping away, and you're kind of shooting into the into the into the void. But you do see the HP of the enemy above me, as such. Um, and he just healed back with that ability called Sanguine Bite, which is great. I love that for me. All right. Now let's see what we got coming in. We got this bird. I'm going to take him out. That is a patrol. So in Deep Dungeon, there are enemies that we call patrols, and there is like kind of one type per set that they just roam around the rooms. They just go from room to room. And some of them are annoying because they will aggro when they're proximity. Others will be a little bit more easier to manage. But generally speaking, we like to take care of these uh, because you just don't want to accidentally aggro and uh, have to deal with two things at once when you're trying to find something else, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and again, we had, mentioned, uh, we had mentioned aggro earlier. So again, this one is proximity. So it would have been kind of nasty to try to navigate through this enemy. Uh, to make it through. Now this one is yet another patrol, but this one, even though he's really big, he's a sight aggro, but I do still want to take care of him so he doesn't become a problem for the future. Uh, he's just going to do some auto attacks, and as long as I keep away, it's not going to be too bad. He's one of the nicer enemies uh, to pull uh, in, into the run. Now, Palace, Palace of the Dead is actually old content, uh, funny enough. I was mentioning earlier when before we started that if you wanted to do a free trial, 
which goes up to Heavensward, uh, you can end up doing this content. And this content is Heavensward content in reality. Uh, it was released in Heavensward. Oh, I wait for that debuff. It was released in Heavensward back in 2016, but lots of people nowadays are starting to get into it, starting to realize it's a challenge. And then not to mention you're dealing with people who like, they're achievement hunters. And, and this content kind of, um, kind of adjusts to the time, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of get like obsolete. Uh, as jobs are updated, it does, you know, shift around if things are a little bit easier, a little bit harder. Like, for instance, uh, Paladin is one example where uh, it got oh, just a tiny bit harder than it had been prior to the new patch that came in on Tuesday. Uh, but, you know, you can still kind of figure it out, make it through, and uh, it, it increases the challenge, but it does make it a lot of fun. And that's what's the great part about this content in general. And one of the reasons, again, why I really like doing this content. Um, I, I almost do it like literally every week, etc. Between this one and the second uh, deep dungeon called Heaven on High. Um, yeah, I mean, it's so, old content, but definitely not dead content. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's not dead content. That's <laughs> Sorry. right. I mean, it's so interesting watching more and more people hop into here and they're experiencing it for the first time. And, and they're like, wow, this is like, this is such a cool challenge. I didn't know this thing existed into this game. Um, mm -hmm. But it, yeah, I started, I started my introduction saying a lot of people kind of know this, potentially know this content because of the, uh, the 51 to 60 spam, which is a common thing to do when you're trying to level jobs uh, below level 60. And it does get grinded. Like, I'll admit, that's kind of boring to kind of just kind of grind that those floors because it's the same thing over and over. But, you know, this is where the challenge run kind of kicks in. And not a lot of people uh, have succeeded here. They are trying and we are definitely helping, that's for sure. But that's what kind of makes it like pretty fun. Oh, yeah. So now let me uh, let me have some fun, and I'm gonna pull one of the more nastier enemies, which is called an Anzu. This is actually one enemy that uh, we tell you not to pull. And what I want to do is I want to demonstrate to you why we don't pull it. I'm gonna wait for my sprint to come up. So we've been handling every single enemy up till now by doing like an opening sprint and some crowd control to kind of help them out so they don't get to me. Uh, this guy kind of doesn't care about that. So we're gonna pull him. I don't have a steel on, which some of the better than deep dungeon guys are gonna know that's a little uh, a little spicy, but we'll do it anyway. Uh, so what he does, he will do a bit of a gap closer. He's going to put a DOT on me and then do a gap closer just like that, which does massive amount of damage, gives me a bone down, and he kind of just keeps using it. So it, it, in essence, it kind of makes it a little ineffective to kind of kite this guy if you're not careful, especially when your heals are not going in. Um, but thankfully, we are just able to get through, I think, and good. Excellent. Now, we're going to see where this ape goes, because that is a proximity enemy. Uh, I think I'll be fine, because I shouldn't draw the aggro, and I will get to the exit moving into here. Yes, let's go, before he goes in. Yeah. Do you think now would be a good time for donations? Yeah, so we can squeeze in some donations on this floor, yes. Absolutely, thank you so much. <clears throat> All right, Warriors of Light, I hope you got your dancer glams ready, because we have met Step Mania. The bonus game is in the marathon. Awesome. Thank you so much to everyone who has been wow. putting your money towards that. Oh, I, I was so worried when we were in those 90Ks, but now we're past them. We got the 100K, and we have a new donation incentive open for Step Mania as well. If we can get to $40,000, we are going to add a sight read bonus chart to Step Mania. This is basically a blind playthrough of a dance game. Y'all, please wow. do not quit now. <laughs> I know we want to see it. Keep those donations coming. Insane. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'd be excited to see that. Please uh, donate Yes, for it. come on. Like, <laughs> let, let's go. Uh, $100 donation I wanted to call out here from Zeno Veritas. <laughs> and do you believe in Aorzega? Aorzega is a menace. <laughs> a menace, I tell you. Now get to the weeping city of Mahach and get me some pictures of Spider Queen. <laughs> nice. That's a good one. Hey, keep All right, going. I've got a $50 donation here from Annie Beta. Longtime warrior of light, new raid healer. It only felt right to make my large donation to help PCF be during the Final Fantasy XIV run. I love all of the uh, class and job uh, specific donations that we're getting here. Like, it, it, it takes the whole party to get through the dungeon normally, not when you're not Angelus. <laughs> yes. um, and, you know, seeing everybody come together here for, for PCF is just amazing. Uh, $50 in from one more name I recognize, uh, Urian J. Algarel. Hey, accept my humble donation for thy noble and honorable cause. For those we have lost, for those we can yet save. Postscript, thou didst a fine job, Eisenway. 
Well done, my friend. Very nice. We can do one more and then I'll pull it back. All right. Uh, Dia sent in $25. Hey, I'm a bard main, but no matter how loud I cheer, it doesn't seem to be buffing the runner. Weird. <laughs> oh, well, it's the thought that counts. Range, physical, DPS, solidarity, and love from Brunhild. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, well, that Anzu just moved himself into the position that's going to aggro me, so I'm kind of stuck in this room. Um, so one thing I, I wasn't able to mention earlier, which which uh, probably was when the stream was cutting out a little bit, uh, we do have a special item in here by the what's called Sustaining Potion. You're going to be seeing me chucking that thing often, which is on my top bar, like a gray little potion that's over there. And what that does is that it gives me a 15 second regen. Oh, actually, sorry, um, um, I need to update myself. It is a 30 second regen, which gives me about 10% of healing every three seconds. Now that is recently updated from the patch that happened on Tuesday and it was really such a nice quality of life for, for a lot of runners to have that update. Um, because one of the things that we were kind of hoping for when the new Deep Dungeon is coming in, again that's in two months, uh, we were kind of hoping to, to kind of get a little bit of ease and access to these potions because sometimes it is a little bit of a barrier for people to hop into this place because we're like, oh yeah, just just have like 400 and 500 of these, of these potions and then you can do it and they're like, oh well, that's a lot. Uh, but thankfully, it's, it's effectively kind of doubled the amount, uh, doubled the duration, so you kind of have to use almost half the amount, which is really, really nice. But you're going to see me using this a lot, and that's one of the main reasons why we're able to survive in this place. And, you know, you can see me a couple times already when uh, Mr. Gaming Chat was, was doing some donations, we were getting pretty low on HP, but those regen potions are one of the key reasons why we are able to uh, keep going on the run and keep survival, really. And with the combination of the kiting that Machinus and really physical range provides, uh, that really spells a nice a nice formula for for getting through on these floors. Now yeah, this um, oh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I was going to say there's a lot of things that are happening on your screen that's very difficult to explain. <laughs> like I don't know yeah. if we would ever hit all of them. I mean, I don't think we even talked about Peloton that you uh, keep using as well, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're going to see kind of a green animation that I use, um, and which is called Peloton. It, again, another another benefit of this of this class and this job because it gives me increased uh, movement speed as we go through the floors. And when you're trying to go a little faster and try to try to get through these sets, uh, going moving faster when when you need to go from room A to room B is certainly a nice thing to have. Um, now, in this floor, what you're going to see is that it's all literally gloomy. The, the actual debuff is called a gloom. Um, and you'll see the kind of like a like a almost like an angry icon on the map over there. So what happens with this debuff is that it, it kind of buffs up all the enemies. You'll see in this Corel that I'm fighting at the center of the screen, you'll see kind of uh, one icon to the left, one to the middle, and one to the right. The left icon is that it's been doing increased damage to me, which is not nice. It's already hitting hard enough. The middle is that it's doing, it has increased defense, which is fantastic as well. And then it also has increased movement speed. So, you know, for them to already walk pretty fast to, to get to me, they're now moving even faster just like, oh, this is great. So I'm going to have to probably use a witching here only because I don't have very many defenses. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, nice and spicy, mm -hmm. but hopefully we don't die to a chicken. So I get to explain a little bit on the, on the witching mechanics. So witching, which you just use, will transform an enemy to three different things. We get a frog, we get an imp, and we get a chicken. Uh, the frog would be the best because it'll just like hit you for like literally single digits, even for these enemies that high. Chicken, you're, you're probably looking at about half the amount of damage, about 50%. If you see an imp, it's a little concerning because that could do close to 80%, uh, if not 70% of its original damage. Uh, and you better die. Okay, good. Because in if that's already powered up and that was doing a lot of damage, that could be very, very spicy. All right. So I need to go a little bit faster here looking at my time. I do want to get to uh, Behemoth in about, with about 20 minutes remaining, so we're going to kind of speed up just a tiny bit. Uh, it, this, this run goes fast, um, and, and you think like an hour is a lot of time, but in reality it's just, it, it just goes in a blazing amount of time. So we'll try to navigate through here. I'm probably going to do a Command of Rage while I try to get through this one. I'll do another Witching to kind of help me out. We're going to do what we call, uh, what the community likes to call a double Rage. And what a double rage means is we're going to take a Pullmander of Rage right here. And I'm going to try to use it on this floor and try to take it into the very next floor. Uh, it's kind of the really nice thing about this about this power-up. Aside from it being, in essence, a floor wipe, uh, it does also provide this, this thing to stay in the transformation. And it does last 60 seconds, so it's really good. Let's see if we get enough kills here. We do not, so I'm actually going to hit this trap which is a luring trap, and that spawns three additional enemies. Normally, that's extremely dangerous, but 
because we are in a rage, that is providing me a little bit of extra kills just to get off the exit. As mentioned, we needed four to eight to get off the floor. So that was, we were kind of, it was like on the higher end of the kill count. So we were able to pull that out. It was fortunate. I didn't predict that the Lloyd Trap was there, but I did use a Pullmander of Sight to kind of help me out. So now what I want to do is with the time remaining, I want to try to get to as many enemies as I can. Now, the double rage kind of implies that we're able to almost clear up two floors in one use, but it looks like I'm only going to probably get two kills here, but that's okay. Uh, and actually this, this set of debuffs is the more nastier one. So before I take it out, I'm going to kind of explain what's going on. We have the Gloom Floor, which we explained earlier, which increases the damage of enemies and their defense. But on top of that, I have uh, HP Down, which reduces my HP. So not only are they doing more damage to me, they will also kill me a lot faster. So we will use the Serenity for this one to kind of make my life just a little bit easier. And then now we're going to proceed and try to get through this floor um, with enough time. I want to try to get off this floor uh, hopefully within the next three minutes, but the next five minutes will be okay too. Um, now this room is actually very interesting in particular, we call this the Donut Room, and it is actually a beautiful thing to have when we are kiting. Uh, because a lot of a lot, enemies have to pretty much have to run, like, ring around the rosy essentially, but it provides us time to kind of get uh, some distance away, and is one of the best rooms to kite literally any enemy uh, into, into, this, into this floor. And fortunately also, um, one thing I did not mention, we did mention about traps, that there are traps on the floor that can randomly spawn, and those are the red symbols, that, like the one I just stepped on on the previous floor. But the spawn room, the room that we just spawned in, which is this one, does will never have a trap. Yeah, it'd be kind of mean if like, you know, you take, you load into the floor and then one, one step later you get into a trap. So thankfully, um, you don't get to hit a trap here, and we get to use this to our advantage while we're getting through um, this set of floors. Yeah. Uh, one thing that, I, did we even mention when you were in the Fury that you were just kind of going through and knocking people dead, but you're not invincible in that mode either. That's right. <laughs> it's a no, you're not. I, I could take damage. Um, and, you know, there's a bit of a, a wind-up for those attacks too, so you have to kind of really manage yourself and not get a little too, you know, too wild and crazy, you know, just aggro mm -hmm. 10 things and just hope you kill them like one at a time. And then also a little bit more of a com complex tech is that there is a debuff that exists in here called No Knockback, which we didn't get to see on this run so far. But basically, the Rage Pomander that we do twice in the run, uh, it is aided by the fact that if you're able to kind of push back the enemy, a knockback, when you hit the enemy with the with your hand with that Manticore, it, it knocks them back into like the wall or something. But when there is no knockback, uh, that Rage effectively is completely useless because it doesn't do the one-shot kill, and that has definitely caught a lot of runners uh, in general, because they they just like so excited, they use the rage like I'm gonna use this really powerful uh, floor wipe, and then they use it, and then they're like, oh no knockback, and does <laughs> damage. And I've seen lots of runs end that way, or even just like you die right on the spot because you're like I'm I'm oh so powerful, mm -hmm. but then not quite because you take that damage. Yeah, let me see if I can do a little attack here. We have a silver chest here which we haven't touched. Hey, yes, thank you for showing it to me. So silver chest, we have three different chests here. We have a brown. We have a bronze chest, we have a gold chest, and we have a silver chest. Now, a lot of times in this specific content, Palace of the Dead, silver chests are generally useless. Well, not useless. They they do are they are the ones that level up your Aether Bowl, which we had explained earlier, and I hope that that was heard by the audience. Um, but when you're 9999, it kind of becomes just something that you don't really need to need to have and need to use. Um, however, they do have a chance to explode, and those silver chests can actually kill you if you're a little bit low HP. So I kind of set up my HP to be a little bit higher, and it does hit the enemies, and as you saw when I used that silver chest, I was able to get kind of a quick kill on the enemy, and I'm very thankful for that to show up, because uh, that, that doesn't happen very often. So at least you got to see that tech, which is really, really cool. What's the uh, chances um, that's going to actually happen when you click on a chest? Um, the chances of them happening is uh, every time you don't want it to, and never when you <laughs> want it to. That's when it happens. Yeah. Well, it happened when we wanted to this time, so... It did, yeah. thankfully. That's real that's, lucky. Uh, maybe it's a marathon luck kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Alright, so we're gonna probably clean up a couple. My time is still pretty good, hopefully. If I'm not out by this kill, I may have to go a little bit faster just to make this up. But we should be okay to go. Uh, I do have a pull up there, which I'm gonna go for. And again, I would like to have a little over, a little, a little over, say, 18 minutes for the boss, because that boss is the really the the hardest part of this run. 
I mean, I don't know. I don't know how it looked to you guys watching if, if this looked hard. I mean, you know, sometimes some people say they you know kind of make it look easy. Like Rossi said, we can make it look easy, but time to manage the time and manage the power ups, etc., uh, are all part of the challenge and having the game knowledge of what to pull and whatnot. Yeah. But the boss in itself will have like just an additional layer of a challenge. Um, unlike basically the entire nine floors we've been doing, that boss is kind of scripted. And if you do raids, if you do parties, uh, that's got a little bit familiar territory. And a lot of the raid bosses are scripted fights. Uh, they will just, you know, it becomes like a memory puzzle game to know what, what it's going to do next, so on and so forth. Um, and that is what Behemoth is, but it does have a little bit of an extra uh, layer to that difficulty. And we'll talk about that when we get in there. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, its initial rotation up from 100% to, to about 20% is like nice and smooth. But once you get down to, once you push it down below 15%, it starts getting real angry and it'll start casting Ecliptic Meteor. And Ecliptic Meteor will do literally 80% of all your HP. And it does a non stop every 10 seconds. And there is no way to stop that unless you basically kill it or it kills you. And with Machinas, we don't have that many tools to heal ourselves, so we have to do a little bit of a DPS race to make this happen. Now, I'll explain this a little bit in terms of the strategy that we will employ, and then we can do a little bit of donations until I get it to about 30%. But basically, what the strategy I'm going to be doing is kind of a clockwork, uh, clockwise strategy. This thing will drop two Trivus AoEs like this, and they do expand bigger than the initial AoE that drops. So I do want to kind of park them in a way that they're kind of out of my way. I like parking them at the edge of the arena, so it kind of keeps the middle of the arena clean. Next up, this this boss will go to the south end where I spawn and do an ability called Trounce. And I just want to bait it out that way so I'm clear. Now I'm going to hang over here, and we're just going to follow the clock. It's going to do another two Charybdises as it goes here, and I'm going to move out of that. Again, I want a little extra space because that thing will expand. And this is more or less what you're looking at with this fight. So this doesn't look overly threatening, but later on, like I said, there's going to be a whole setup that we need to do um that is really uh, i would say pretty complicated pretty difficult because you could mess it up uh we gotta hold our, our damage so that we don't push it too far too fast and then get everything open with a big burst to be able to handle this thing in the amount of time we will also be doing a strategy that is a little bit newer uh, we call it the itemless strategy usually we will use a healing potion or a power up potion uh to increase our damage but we will do none of that and it will make this a little bit harder and that's one of the reasons why we kind of have a safety net on this boss. So if I fail the first one, we'll kind of do it the normal way after that. But hopefully I'll nail it on the first go. So from here on until about 30%, Mr. Game and Shout, you can do some donations. All right, just cut me off when we're good. Chico Leg Day yep. send in $214. Red Mages are such nice people. Every time I help one out, they say, thanks a vermilion. <laughs> Shout out. Oh. oh, come on. Shoutouts to my <laughs> FC mates, fellow healer mains, and anyone dodging the Limlom Lim Lom chat log. Angelus Demonis received a player commendation. GG mm. on that. Uh, Thank you. Kitarada sent in $100. White Mage was the first class I main. Don't worry, the only hit point that matters is the last one. And I know where Raze is on my hotbar. Also, I have some gill I found lying around in these pockets. That's the kind of attitude that gives tanks a heart attack. Uh, a $25 donation that says, Warrior of Light checking in, take my frames for this run. I'll donate an extra $25 if the announcer can correctly say my Warrior of Light's name. Oh, boy. Fakust Eve? Cross my fingers there. JNA sent in $200. Such donation. This was my intention. Very nice. Yeah, I'll, I'll take Praetorium Donos. I'm here for that. Uh, Zyros <laughs> with $100 on that theme. Zyros. And from the deepest pit of my wallet to the very pinnacle of the heavens, this stream shall tremble. Unleash donations! From all of us at Team Drifter, thanks for being an awesome friend and teammate, Angelus. Thank you, Team Drifter. Appreciate it. Uh, Chris B sent in $500. Dark Knight main, really excited to see Palace of the Dead here at GDQ. Good luck, Angelus. Eldritch sent in $50. Been so excited for the Palace of the Dead run, I have barely been able to get to floor 50 solo. Also, shout outs to my <laughs> girlfriend and our IRL Makode, Ethel, and Winslow. Incentive goes to Step Mania, do the Manderville. 
Uh, quick check on that. For those four bonus sight read charts, we've got a whole light party's worth of extra content. We are just over 6,000 out of the 40,000 that we need to get that in. So please keep those donations coming. Uh, what are we at on percent here? We can do one more donation. Okay. Uh, Marcus sent in $25. Slash target, Mr. Game and Shout. Slash action, Swiftcast, me. Wait one. Slash action, thin air, me. Wait one. Slash action, raise. Ah, the res! Thank you! Ah. He's a good <laughs> macro. Yeah. Alrighty, so we're at 30%. What we're gonna do, we're gonna, we haven't used this Pomander yet, but we have a Pomander called a Pomander of Lust, and it turns us into a Succubus. And what that does is that it, it allows us to do a special property on the boss, which gives them vulnerability stacks, which basically, we wanna be going for five stacks, five hits on the boss, because it will then now do, or we will be able to do 50% more damage on the boss, which is, you know, it sounds like a nice little, little luxury thing, but that is actually something that is nearly required to make this run. And when we are transformed, we can't heal, because uh, we, we can't use items while transformed. So it does make it a little spicy to manage the timing of it, etc. So I'm gonna hold my damage here. My gauges look good. I have 100% in all the gauges, which is kind of what I want for. Now I'm gonna kind of position my, my, my Pomanders to be ready for here. I'm gonna be waiting for a specific part of this fight. I'm gonna do my sustaining. I'm gonna do a tactician, which is a defense thing. And now I pop the Pomander of Lust here. I'm gonna move out of this AOE. And now we're gonna go for five hits. And again, I can't heal here, but we did get some defenses up, and we did get our potion up, which, by the way, with that update is really nice because it'll last a little bit longer for us. I'm going for five stacks here. And once I'm out of five stacks, we are good to go. Now, I have a macro that'll allow me to kind of see this HP value of Behemoth, and we're looking for something in the range of 15%. If I push it below to 14.9, it'll get angry and start doing Meteor. So I don't want to push it that far. Let's see where it's at. It is currently at 15.3. I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but actually that's it. It's a perfect spot. I did that in one shot, so thankfully I didn't push it over. If I do another hit here, auto attack or GCD, which is my main abilities, my global cooldowns, then it is going to get angry. And I do want to time this in a very specific part of this fight. Um, what we're looking for is that when he is busy doing an attack, he cannot go into that meteor phase. So we kind of lock him into an attack and then take advantage of that timing. And that's what we're looking for. So coming up soon, all right, so the first coming in, I'm gonna set up here. Boom, I'm gonna drop my turn and let's do the burst. Perfect, now he's stuck doing Charybdis and we're going to kind of get this burst and try to kill him in time. First meter coming in, you're gonna see the amount of damage that it's gonna do to me. I'm gonna hope that I can get enough damage here. This looks kind of good. A little tight here. Nice, and that is Behemoth, there you go. It was about to cast, wow. that, uh, cast that meter down, but we were able to get it down, no problem. If that meter dropped, then I would have been dead. So, well, thankfully, we made, it through. <laughs> we made it through between all the frames and, and all that. So, that is definitely the toughest fight. Oh, look at all the friendos here. Uh, that is definitely the toughest fight. I mean, you know, I've done that so many times, but um, for someone doing it for the first time, a lot of the nerves come in. A lot of things have to happen correctly for that to go on and, and work, but... We nailed it on the first go, so... Oh my gosh, look at all these people. Uh, let me go here. Look at it, look at this! And as as I had asked and hoped, these guys are coming in here. Look at these airboats. Well, or at least our version of an airboat. I have oh. a little airboat. Oh my god, it's so big. There's so many of them. Oh now, hopefully, <laughs> the frames are gonna die, probably, but there's the run, guys. Thank you for watching, I really appreciate that. <laughs> uh, Frosty, if you want to do a, your outro, yeah, no, thanks for letting me come on here. I didn't really have to do too much work. You did all the heavy lifting, <laughs> hey, uh, fortunately help, enough. Uh, yeah, but I, I loved being here. You're an amazing part of the community, and thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, you know, Hopefully next time we can do this in person. Yeah, that would be so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you guys are interested, you can find me over at twitch.tv blog talk, and we'll be doing a charity event over there in like about a week and a half or so. If you mm -hmm. guys want to check that out. Uh, but yeah, and like the most difficult content in the game is coming out soon called Ultimate. <laughs> We're gonna have a new one. Uh, and so if you wanna watch that stuff, check that out. But again, you know, thank you everyone in the community who came out to support. Uh, I'm, I'm just happy to be here and smile and ask dumb questions. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks for being on my couch. I really appreciate it.
Um, I am, I'm like looking and I'm like looking at my thing and like, I'm like, oh yeah, here we're gonna drop some frames and it's like, oh, it's perfect. I, I don't know what happened, but you know, we pushed through, we were able to stick with it. You know, things happen on the run, but thankfully we were able to get to the end and thankfully, hopefully Behemoth looked good to you guys. So thank you for that. Um, thank you to my Twitch teams, Twi Team Drifter, uh, Team Ethernet, and my own Twitch team, uh, Team FFXIV Solo. They are all amazing content creators. If you want to see more Final Fantasy XIV, this content and other stuff, check out the directory. So many awesome people. Thank you to, for GDQ for, for having this run and, and, and uh, letting, this, letting this happen. Again, apologies for all the tech issues, but we got there and thank you for helping me out with that. Appreciate that. I hope the viewers enjoyed this run, give you a little bit of a different perspective on this content for Palace of Dead Deep Dungeon. We got the new one coming in in two months. It's going to be a little less floors, 100 floors, but um, it's still a really tough challenge. And I'm going to be diving into that uh, big time when that shows up in about two months. If you want to find me, I'm Angelus Demonis, uh, twitch.tv slash Angelus Demonis. Check out the About Us and the links for our Twitter, the YouTube channels, and our amazing, amazing Deep Dungeon uh, community, solo community. Not just me, but so many people are there to help you if you're doing it for your first time. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the stream, free trials can come on here and try this specific challenge. So if you want to do that, we'll help you out. We'll give you all the, all the starting kit and everything. And lastly, if you guys are looking for some guides, not just the video, but some guides, highly recommend to check out Icy Veins because we are working on a series with Deep Dungeon. I have a guide up there for the Machina Solo, like you just saw this job from 1 to 200. And uh, if, you, if you want to figure out how to do the thing, how to start up, definitely check uh, Icy Beans out for that. But um, thank you. We're all, we're all about helping the guys in the community in 14 to try to get this title. So if you want to be next in line and join the Discord, talk to us, find me, etc. cetera. And uh, thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for having me and have a wonderful marathon, guys. Appreciate it. See ya. Thank you so much, Angelus, for that incredible run. That was amazing. And also, that's a lot of airboats. That is a lot of airboats and a whale. And uh, how I, 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 <laughs> I'm genuinely curious how many of the people on that mana cutter right now have like not busted that out in literal years. Holy cow. That was incredible. Thank you, everybody. I do want to get a couple more donations in real quick here. Um, I guess I got it right because Fakus Steve came back with another $25. Such donation. It was my intention. And then uh, uh, this one made me giggle so much. Uh, Fierce Wolf sent in $50. Makode White Mage reporting for duty. Could you imagine Gaius as a botanist? Lush vegetation. This was entirely my intention. Putting these $50 towards the Step Mania bonus charts. And we are making great progress on that. We are over $12,000 out of the $40,000 to get that done. So everyone, please keep those donations coming. All right. We're going to come down a little bit from the hype. We've got a quick word that we want to make sure to get in from some friends of ours here at GDQ. Fangamer is a video game merchandise company. They are shipping worldwide, and the sales of the GDQ merch that they are selling right now will benefit the Prevent Cancer Foundation. They've got some awesome stuff up on their website right now. So make sure that you go check them out. Fangamer.com slash GDQ. Check out that collection before it is no longer available. Make sure to say hi while you're there. Thank you so much, Fangamer, for helping to support GDQ. All right, I need to calm down a little bit from that. Everybody stand up, stretch, take a break. Uh, let those cool down, refresh, but don't get too far. We've got more awesome runs coming up right after this.
Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 Online, powered by Twitch. I am Mr. Game and Shout. I am still recovering after that amazing Final Fantasy XIV Palace of the Dead run and trying to brace for the Step Mania run that we've got coming up here in just a few minutes. Before we do, though, looks like we've got an interview coming up. Fiesel is going to be talking with one of our upcoming runners, a speedrunner, a host, and an aficionado of critters of all sorts, Sky Bills. Fiesel, I will let you take it from here, my friend. All right, thank you. Well, hello, I'm Fiesel. I am here with the runner of Super Mario All-Stars Shuffler, Sky Bills. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Fiesel. All right, so... Super Mario All-Stars, that's the SNES game that's got Mario 1, both versions of Mario 2, Mario 3, and Super Mario World, because that incentive got met. So five games in this cartridge here. But how does the shuffler aspect of this all work? So what's going to happen is I'm going to be playing a game, and then every 30 to 60 seconds, it will shuffle over to another game. I don't know where it's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to be over a pit when it happens in a different game. It's going to be absolute chaos and adding Super Mario World, which, by the way, thank you to everybody who donated for that. That's just going to be that much more chaos. So it's like me playing five games at once, except it's going to shuffle, and I don't know which game it's going to shuffle to or how or in what context. And it could just be like in the middle of a level. It's not like one level, then another level. Like you just halfway through a level and boom, now you're in a different game. Yeah, you consider that good luck if you can get through an entire level without being interrupted. Mm. That's not going to happen often. <laughs> Right, and I, I can just imagine like swapping into a game and like just picking up right where you left off. Like what? Like you could be in the air, you could be jumping, you could be like in front of an enemy. Like, do you find that you get a lot of like deaths because you just could you just you know jump into a context that you have like no idea what's going on? Oh yeah, I mean death is going to be unavoidable here. It's how many, and trust me, I'm going to be putting in five dollars per death for this. Anyone who wants to match me in that can, but it's for a good cause. It's for charity. It's just a matter of how many deaths, there and how many deaths will I elude? Because that those are going to be the absolute best moments in the shuffler. Is when I think I'm dead, and then I'm not dead. Now you had mentioned earlier, like a problem with like appearing over a pit or like you know jumping in right over a pit. So like what? What's the problem there? Well, what happens is I lose all of my momentum, right? So if I'm going to jump over a pit when it shuffles back, I'm no longer holding the same direction than I am on the controller, and I'm just going to fall to my doom. If I'm flying, <laughs> who knows what will happen there? Right. I could live, I could survive, I could also just, again, lose all my power-ups and die. Who knows what's going to happen? Man, that's kind of mean. <laughs> but I guess, you know, it's for all, it's all for a good cause. Absolutely. So you are... Definitely playing five games simultaneously. Like you're making progress in five games simultaneously. Like, what do you do to like keep context? Like, are you in your mind, are you keeping track of all this? Or is it like the screen fades in and you're like, okay, here's where I am. I'm just focusing on this. Or like, do you have kind of like a broader, like, you know, stored up like all where you are in these different games? I'm not going to lie, I go purely off of muscle memory and which power-ups I want to have in a game. That means I'm going to be sacrificing a little bit of speed for safety because this is more of a survival run, not a speed run. We will be doing some fasts in that. We'll be doing some strategies. But again, ultimately, we want to survive more than go fast. So it's a matter of prioritizing that in terms of how I react. How I react is how I'm going to react. I don't have a fixed way of doing it because, again, the shuffles are going to happen randomly. It's like a seed in a randomizer, right? Like There's no way to prepare for it. You just go off of instinct. Yeah, and you probably will have different power-up combinations, right? So does that mean you have to kind of practice all these levels, you know, small Mario, fire Mario, like the various, you know, Mario types? Oh, absolutely. I'll have a preference for what power-ups I want, but sure. I'm going to have to know some of what speedrunners refer to as DLC, right? I'm going to want to know where every power-up is in my route, and some stages or some levels, I'm going to want certain power-ups, then I'm going to want another. In Lost Levels, where I play as Luigi... I'm not going to want to grab any power-ups at all besides a star. Why? Because I move better as small Luigi there. So again, it's all up to a runner's preference, and that's what makes these shufflers so great. Every runner is going to play them differently. You all are just going to see the Skyville's interpretation of this tonight. All right. Um, so you're doing, like, no wrong warps as the categories for these games, but are there any kind of, like, glitches or skips that you will be taking advantage of? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I have to do a few, right? So one of my favorites is the 7-2 ladder jump in Super Mario Brothers 2 US, mm -hmm. where you skip most of 7-2. I don't want to play through 7-2. You all don't want to see 7-2. I don't want to shuffle through 7-2. So that's going to be one of the big ones there. Probably the biggest skip of the entire run. Oh, I kind of like 7-2. That's too bad. 
No, I'm just kidding. I actually really like when people go off the top of the screen and fun things happen. That's actually my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So we've got an incentive for Special World. One incentive was already met to add Super Mario World, but now we got another incentive to add the Special World of Super Mario World, which are some difficult levels. So how are you going to incorporate that with the Shuffler? Yeah, so Special World takes place at the end, and there's going to be time to meet that incentive. So what I'm going to do is, if I'm at the end of all the games and we just have Special World, you all don't want to see me just play through Special World. That's boring. I'm going to be adding some Lost Levels levels onto that. So once I'm done with the Lost Levels, if the incentive's met, I will save and quit, go back out to the menu because it's All-Stars. And then I'll start over at 1-3 and start playing through Lost Levels Warpless for however as long as it takes for me to get to Phase 2 of Bowser from Super Mario World. Then what I'll do after that is I will turn off the Shuffler for Lost Levels, and we'll have, optimally, these beautiful credits from Super Mario World to accommodate that. Great, that's right. Keeping it in the, keeping the spirit of Shuffler going makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, do you recommend Shuffler to other people, and why? Why, why do you recommend Shuffler? Well, what I... First of all, yes, absolutely, I would recommend Shuffler to everyone. Sure. And here's why. You don't need to know every single speed strat. You don't have to know any speed strats. You just have to know what's in the game, how to survive, and you just need to have fun. I mean, again, you know, in any other speed run, it's like you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to die. But, like, the key part, the key part is the content that happens as a result of it, right? We can always turn on a VOD or even speedrunning websites and see the fastest times out of there, but the mistakes mistakes. That's where the beauty is, right? How do you overcome death? How do you work through death? How do you work through suboptimal situations? Again, it's just a whole run into its own. And again, as for everyone trying it, it's one of the most accessible forms. Challenge runs. I mean, this is very cutting edge stuff where speed running, casual, I mean, just everything intersects. Like, do you enjoy the game? Great. You can play a shuffler. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds great. It's like a real like visceral experience. It's just like you read and react and you're just kind of like in there in the moment and not necessarily planning about exactly what you're going to do next. That sounds really cool. Yeah. Okay, well, that is all the time we have to chat. Thank you very much, Skybills, for talking with me. Well, thank you, Fiesa, again, too. And I really hope everybody here enjoys the Shuffler. Thank you so much again for donating for Super Mario World 11 Exit Glitchless. We'll have five games now in the Shuffler. Now let's just see if we can hit that Special World incentive. That's right. That Special World incentive. You got some time. You got one run and then the daily recap. And then right after the daily recap is when this Shuffler is going to happen. So everybody stay tuned. A couple hours from now, you get to see this awesome run. Hopefully the goal will be met. Um, but with that, we'll throw it back to the host. playing with you, Fiesel. I'm Sint. Joining me is, as always, the incredible Frozen Flygon. Court, it's great to be here. <sighs> Look, Twitch chat, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. We had, like, this whole bit planned. Uh, I grabbed myself, you know, an incredible fun little shield and sword combo from our friends over at Heroic Replicas, uh, which is actually quite weighty to the point that yeah. it just ripped my headset half off my head. <laughs> Give me one second on there. I got Court something very much resembling a staff... We were, gonna do a, um, cane. Yeah, we were going to do a Gorgeous. really fun uh, The Omega Protocol kind of intro to call back to Final Fantasy XIV. The problem was we couldn't get up because we just spent the entire hour standing <laughs> there going... to the screen. Wait, wait, what? Court was... Court not being a Final Fantasy player no. was asking questions and I was sitting there going, I I'm sorry, did you just landmine on a machinist? You, you absolute madman. I love it. That was an incredible oh, run. Huge so round of applause for Angelus for that happening. But tonight isn't over. We have so many more incredible speed runs for you all to see. We've got Step Mania coming yes. up next and we have some more bonus. I, we told you. We told you we there were going to be bonus tracks and in Step more. Mania. There are. Right now we've got a four pack of sight reads. That means these are charts that Demo has never seen before. Just going to do it live on stream. See what happens. You want that to happen. We want that to happen. Let's make it happen. And the easiest way to make it happen is to get some donations in, put them towards that incentive. And while you're getting those donations in, you're going to get yourself eligible for prizes. We have so many great prizes to talk about, Court. We absolutely do. And the important thing is get just get $25 in. That's going to get you into everything that we're talking about here. And then $50 for our day prizes, which are fan. Fantastic. You don't want to miss them. Let's specifically talk about some of the prizes we didn't get to show off last time because they're so cool. Uh, like from Iggy Zig, our good friend and host, this absolutely incredible oh. crystal Mewtwo uh, Pokeball here. A uh, little bit 
Yep, there we go. A little <laughs> bit hard uh, to get in camera frame right now just because, uh, I'll be honest, it's got a really short USB power cord. We've got a and laptop hidden under the laptop. table. <laughs> But we had to show this thing oh off gosh, lighting up because it, it looks fantastic. It can cycle colors. It can stay on a flat color if you prefer. It looks incredible. Iggy, where do you find these prizes? I must know. But what I do know is that for a $25 donation, it and all of the other prizes that we have available right now could be yours. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, one of the day prizes we've been talking about, we didn't get to show in the previous segment, we've got the Diddy Kong uh, that is... The, the Diddy Kong like paper uh, on its wooden stand. It is so beautiful. I just absolutely love the detail that has been put into this. We've been showing, we showed it off early this morning, but it's still available now for bidding. If you get your $50 in now. It is, it is so incredible. Yeah, we get to show it off here on camera real quick. You've got uh, Diddy in the cart uh, you know, zooming by on the track there. You've got a very, very little tip top <laughs> in a hover boat. Uh, and a Pipsy flying a plane over the arch. It is it is just absolutely fantastic. You see the detail in those little yeah. trees, in every element of the scenery and the foliage. Again, that is all done from hand-cut paper, which is absolutely ridiculous. Thank you so much to our good friend Sky Berkson for sending that out to us again. $50 donation, but you've got to get that donation in today. It's also, of course, going to get you entered in to win a wonderful collector's edition of Final Fantasy XIV yes. Walker, the newest expansion. It comes with so much cool stuff. An absolutely lovely statue of Ardbert, the Warrior of Light as a paladin, a great print set, uh, this adorable Whopperit keychain, the Pin of Azim, and so much more. $50 minimum donation. You can't get it anymore. Get that donation in. It could be yours. Also, for the Shmup fans in the audience, I know you are out there. We've got some great shmup soundtracks for you from Cave. Different Cave games here. Uh, we've got uh, Dodonpachi Daifukatsu. We've got Dodonpachi Daifukatsu Black Label. We've got Dodonpachi Dai Ojo. Uh, we've got Death Smiles. There are so many great soundtracks. Yes. In there. And again, a lot of those you can't just go get. You have to have basically been at the event they were released at. If you wanted the physical copies of them, you can get a whole bunch of them right now if you win that prize with a $25 minimum donation. And it works out really well because this prize block ends at Espigaluda, which is the shmup we've all been excited to see this event. You don't want to miss a single run that's coming up now. No. Oh, they're all so amazing. They're so good. And of course, we have our grand prizes like yes. we mentioned. We have the Fallout AER-9 Laser rifle from uh, our friends over at Vulpin Props and Cute Monster Props. Looks absolutely incredible. We have a lovely gaming PC from our friends over at Skytech Gaming. You can check out the specs on it, but it's got a pretty solid CPU and a 3060 Ti, which is a great graphics card for you to go off of. And from our friends over at Heroic Replicas, we have a bunch of really cool replicas like the aforementioned... Oh! Hylian shield here. I know. Oh, it's a little I'm, bit bigger than this uh, this print you've having as well. It's, it's, it's a little bit larger in person, huh? Yeah, it's pretty impressive. It's, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's, it's got a it's got a steel front. The uh, <laughs> perimeter is cast aluminum. Wow. Uh, the Triforce is a machined bronze. The Loftwing emblem is emblem is done in vinyl. I'll be honest, there are facts on the back of the card. I'm looking it up. <laughs> what I'm thinking about right now, carrying this, is that this is like a 20 pound shield. This is this is not you know some flimsy uh, piece right here. I tried this to casually <laughs> I tried to casually pick this up in another segment, and I like lurched to the floor. I was like, oh, that is bigger than me. <laughs> it is quite impressive. And it comes with your choice of another replica from our friends over at Heroic Replicas, like this absolutely beautiful Sly Cooper's cane that we happen to have yes. here. Court's going to show it off for you. It's lovely, about three feet long, made from a good solid hardwood with an anodized aluminum hook and tip. You could have that Sly Cooper's cane along with that lovely Highland Shield. You could have that Highland Shield along with 14, or one of 14 other amazing replicas. Big shout outs to our friends over at Heroic Replicas. Now, there's one more prize I want to talk about before we send you back to my good friend, Mr. Game and Chow. And, you know, I saw during that Final Fantasy run while I was glued to my seat that Chad had started a bit of a $5 donation train. And I'm a big fan of $5 donation trains. So I thought, you know what? Why don't we keep that going? So starting with this prize segment, if you donate $5 between now and the end of ESP Glada later tonight, you'll be entered to win a, play a PlayStation 5. $5 oh. PlayStation 5. There you go. Get $5 in chat if you haven't already during the segment. Trust me, 100% worth it to do so. That's all for us. 
Don't go anywhere. I cannot stress that enough. Every single run coming up tonight is a banger. Mr. Game and Shout, play us out. Thank you, Scent. Thank you, Frozen Flygon. Great to see you as always. Was that $5 for a PS5? Uh, that is news to me, but that is all the more reason to keep those donations coming. Please keep them coming. Uh, I want to get in one more real quick here. A $25 donation that we had from Weasel. I told myself I had donated enough for this year, but... Final Fantasy XIV at GDQ, a Sight Read Step Mania incentive, Mario All-Stars, fine, take my money. Thank you, Weasel, for those $25. Quick update on that Step Mania incentive. We got the bonus run in, we're about to head to it, but we've got a follow-up incentive there as well. If we can hit $40,000, we are going to add four bonus Sight Read charts to this Step Mania demo. So, uh, checking on that now, we are at about $16,500 out of the $40,000 that we need. I know you might be thinking, oh, they're adding it to the end. We've got like an hour on that. No, no, no. Do not sleep on this. Things move fast at GDQ. Gamesdonequick.com slash donate. Scroll down. Go to the incentives, the add incentives button. Select the Step Mania Add for Sight Read bonus charts. Get those donations in, please. About to cross 17,000. Just 17,000 just as I'm talking. You love to see it happen. And you know what else I love to see? Dancing on gdq i love that we get these i'm so hyped for this one all right demo i'm not gonna hold you up any longer man show us your moves <laughs>